Hello and welcome to episode number 115 of the Savvy Social Podcast. This is a show dedicated to passion-led entrepreneurs and business owners just like you who want to learn how to use social media as a tool to grow their business. I'm your host, Andrea Jones, and I'm fiercely committed to helping you understand both the how and the why of social media marketing so that you can build those connections, create community, and make your difference in the world. Now, this show is brought to you by Traject Social, which is the world's most complete social media management tool, and it's my tool of choice when it comes to things like scheduling, managing, and especially reporting on social media. Try them out for yourself for free by going to trajectsocial.com. This show is also brought to you by Agency Vista. So I just released a new tutorial video showcasing my Agency Vista on my YouTube channel. Definitely check that out because I'm showing you exactly how they can prove that your agency is verified, which is so important for attracting the right clients on social media for your agency. And it is just such a great platform for bringing the right right people to your business. So check them out by going to agencyvista.com and I'll put the link in the show notes to my verified profile so you can take a look for yourself. And of course, check out the video so I can show you all of the details of what comes with your free Agency Vista profile. Now, in today's episode, we're talking all about the social media success framework, which is the basis of what we teach in the Savvy Social School. And it's a great framework that you can bring to your social media strategy so that you're actually moving towards your goals. Because oftentimes we start with thinking about what we need to post and what time we need to post and what hashtags we need. And yes, all of that matters, but that's not where we're going to start today. We're going to start with the end in mind. We're starting with the end in mind. So I'll give you an example. Let's say, um, think of your social media strategy as a tree. And when you're thinking about a tree, oftentimes you think about the full tree at the end. You think about the big trunk with all the branches and maybe bright green leaves. But that tree started from a tiny seed and it grew its roots first, then it built the trunk, and then it built the leaves. So though today you're looking at that tree and you see the final product, there was a huge process and a lot of time and undertaking that went into building that tree. And I think sometimes when we look at other people's social media accounts, we see the tree and we don't see the little seed that they started with. So I want you to think about your your preferences as well when you're thinking about your social media strategy, because there's a lot of experts out there. You can Google anything. Should Instagram be great for me? Should I be on Facebook? Should I be on LinkedIn? And you'll get lots of pros and cons. But at the end of the day, your preference really does matter. And if you don't like doing it, you're not going to stay consistent with it. So it's kind of like working out. Like if you go to the gym and you know you should be running on the treadmill, but you hate it. Am I the only person? I I cannot stand it. (laughs) The treadmill, running on it. I just, I will never do it. If someone said I I needed to do that to survive, I'll be like, okay, well, I'm just going to die then. (laughs) Okay, that sounds extreme. But the reality is I like to do group programs, especially dance classes. That's my way of staying fit. Um, Outside of that, I love the elliptical. I love going on walks. I love riding my bike. And so those are the things that I'm going to do and not running on the treadmill. The other thing I want you to consider as you're going into building your strategy is that balance is key. Balance is key. And we've got to have a balance of things on our plate when we're focusing on our social media strategy. And oftentimes, we sometimes focus on one thing or the other. So I've got some students who come to me who post all promotional content. So all they're posting is like promoting their business, promoting their business, promoting their business. And that's like eating a diet of just meat. Just meat all the time. No veggies, no nuts, no green things, no potatoes, just meat all the time. (laughs) You'll make yourself sick if you do that. 
And then I have the other clients on the other end of the spectrum who just post these beautiful quotes and maybe they ask a few questions, but they never talk about their business. And that's kind of like just eating chocolate all day. Feels good, right? So we've got to have more substance. We have to have a balance to this strategy so that we have this approach that's still fun, but also gets the nutrients that we need in our business. And honestly, um, social media is like that. It is nutrients for our business. It's something that we have to keep doing. This is just the way that business is done today. And at the time of recording this in September of 2020, We are six months into a global pandemic, six plus months, and social media is one of the few ways that we have to continue to connect with our people. So there's no way around it. So my personal goal for this episode is to get you through as much as possible. And the strategies that I'm going to share today can work without fancy software or without ads. Um, Those things are all great. They're fuel to the fire. They're seasoning to your meal, so to speak. Um, We're talking about the basics. We're going to talk about the basics. And for those of you who are in the free course, a lot of this is covered in the free course. So if you haven't signed up yet, head to onlinedrea.com slash free, and you'll get the material we're covering today, but you'll also get a workbook to go along with it. And it's got videos and examples. Um, and so I'm going to cover the basics here, but definitely sign up for the free course, Social Media Success Framework, and you'll get additional materials. All right. So the first step in this framework is the build stage. So there's four different stages of this framework and the first part is built. And this is the very foundational elements. This is your roots if we're thinking about a tree. Okay. So when you're building out your strategy, I want you to think about your three W's. Those of you who've been hanging out with me for a while, you know, three W's. It's what do you sell? Who is it for? And why does it matter? So what do you sell? Basic. So if I'm going to say, what do I sell? Savvy Social School. Who is it for? Entrepreneurs, specifically online entrepreneurs and business owners. Why does it matter? You want confidence. You want a path. You want a direction towards using success social media as a tool to grow your business. So you're using social media as a tool to grow your business and you want it to be easy and fun and simple. That's the why does it matter. And that third W, the why does it matter, is all about transformation. So I used to describe the school as we've got Instagram courses and LinkedIn courses and done for you templates and coaching calls. And most people go, that's a lot of stuff. It feels like a lot of work (laughs) that I need to do, right? So instead of talking about what's included in the program and that why does it matter, I'm talking about the transformation. You can use social media as a tool to grow your business. That's what you want at the end of the day. You want to stop stressing and guessing about social media and you want to plan. Those are transformative descriptions of the product. Uh, So whether you have a product, a server, service, whatever your offer is, focus on the transformation. And if you're selling a blog, a podcast, a YouTube show, you're still selling it. Your currency though, is it money? It's attention. So when I talk about what do you sell, you still have to have a transformation at the end of the day. Maybe you're selling a moment of relief from a busy day. Maybe you're selling entertainment. Maybe you're selling inspiration. Maybe you're selling a service that saves time. Maybe you're selling a product that gets them there faster. Okay, so think about the transformation. All right, so we're still in the build stage of our framework, and I want you to think about two steps towards your product. So we have the next step and the last step, okay? This is what we call in in our framework part of our social media sales funnel. This is like the most simplistic version of the sales funnel is you have a next step and a last step. And oftentimes when we're uh, thinking about our social media strategy, we head straight to that last step buy my thing, give me money. And that's great and all, but oftentimes when we're approaching social media, we're talking to people who don't really know us that well yet. That's where they're following us. They're trying to get to know us, get a little interested. So we need to give them little breadcrumbs along the way. We need to give them steps along the way before they fully commit to what we're asking them to commit to. And I like to think of this as dating. 
Uh, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while or you've seen any of my other videos, I talk about the social media like dating a lot. And the reason is, is because it works. It's not just jumping right into marriage with someone. It's getting to know them, getting on a few dates with, going on a few dates with them, um, f- um, getting to understand who they are and having them understand who you are and getting comfortable with them. So think about what those steps look like in your business. Oftentimes, there are things like uh, getting on a consultation call with you, signing up for your newsletter, following you, sending you a DM, downloading a free lead magnet. My next step is the free course. So it's a free course. It takes some effort to go through, but it helps build trust. One of my next steps is this podcast. So before you sign up for the free course, even, maybe you're listening to this podcast. I also have YouTube videos. Um, I talk a lot on social media about different free resources. And so those are all of my next steps that help you get comfortable enough to commit with me into the Savvy Social School, okay, which is my last step. Um, The last thing I want to talk about is your digital brain, hosting your digital brain somewhere. Uh, And this is a newer concept that we're developing right now with our clients that we're going to bring into the school in 2021. But your digital brain is essentially where your concepts live. It's where your concepts live. So how do people know who you are and what you do. And oftentimes we try to have those concepts live on social media, but social media is almost too fast paced for those concepts to live. So you need a digital brain where your concepts live. And this digital brain is great for once you start bringing on team members because they are just mining your brain for content. Okay, so this is the digital brain, your hub. And oftentimes, this is also our next step. But your digital brain is important because it's where your concepts live. It's how someone can understand your framework. So this episode, total, totally meta, but this episode is my digital brain. It's part of how I share what I do and how you can understand my approach to social media. So my digital brain. So your brain, digital brain may look like blog posts, it may look like podcasts, it may look like YouTube videos, a newsletter, a PDF, even just a page on your website that describes your framework, but your digital brain should live somewhere outside of social media. The idea is social media is going to attract people into your ecosystem, and then they should be funneled somewhere where they can understand what you're talking about, and then take that next step and that last step with you. Okay, so this is where your concepts live. And a lot of us are um, thought leaders and we have a mission and we're, we're out to impact the world. And so we need that content to live somewhere. I'm a huge fan of podcasts, uh, but YouTube videos work really great for this. Um, I have clients who do Facebook live shows. I have clients who, um, do all sorts of things, blogging, writing. You need your digital brain to live somewhere. And you actually don't need to do this a lot. I know I do it a lot. So I, I podcast weekly. I post YouTube videos a couple times a month. I blog a couple times a month. I'm creating a lot of content, but I do it because I like it. I just enjoy creating content. Um, as well as all of the content I create for this school. I spend hours on this and I like it. But a lot of us don't have that kind of time. And so oftentimes just committing to do this on a on a monthly basis or even a quarterly basis can really move your business forward. Okay. So again, this is a digital brain concept is something that we are developing for our clients and that we're going to bring to the Savvy Social School soon. But I wanted to plant that seed now so you guys can start thinking about what that means for you. All right. So we talked about the build stage of the funnel. Next stage or, or of our framework, the build stage of the framework, our next stage is create. And I'm actually going to reference some past podcasts here because there's quite a, a lot of time we can spend here. And oftentimes we get stuck here as creators. Uh, but the create stage of this framework is designed to um, create your social media posts. So you're going to write your captions, you're going to create some graphics, 
you're going to, it's all about your message and getting people out there. And oftentimes we're using the five pillars of content to bring people into our world. So I'll reference, I have a podcast all about writing promotional posts. I have a podcast about the five pillars of content and there's a few episodes about messaging. So I'm going to link to those in the show notes. Definitely check those out because they'll be very helpful to you to help you move the needle in your business and creating content. There's a lot of time we can spend here and I don't want to, I don't want us to get caught up in this because honestly, it's just one stage out of a four part funnel. And like I said, we just get stuck here sometimes. Okay. Uh, my main takeaway from the content section is that you're mining your digital brain to create your content. So there shouldn't be new concepts on social media. Sometimes you can test out new ideas if you'd like, but really your concept should live in your digital brain. Um, and we are having a system to it. So we're going to set ourselves up for success with a system. Um, so if you decide every Monday you're going to promote your business, then stick with that. Every Monday you're going to promote your business. Don't change it. I know you're going to feel like it's repetitive, but it needs to be repetitive, like a commercial jingle stuck in someone's head so that they can connect you with your business. Okay. All right, our next stage of this framework is the grow stage, grow. And this is where I actually want you to spend a lot of time. And once you have the build and create stages set up and they're in this order intentional, intentionally, once you have the build and create sections set up and running, you're going to spend a lot of time in this grow stage of the framework. And we're going to use what I call the savvy engagement growth recipe in this stage. And it's a simple concept, but it takes practice to do, like working out, very simple concepts there, you know, be active, raise your heart rate for 30 minutes, but in practice is where you see the magic happen. So the Savvy Engagement Growth Recipe has three key ingredients and one little piece of dessert. So the first ingredient is liking posts on social media. So just double tapping, hitting a heart, hitting a thumbs up, liking. Now, this is a very non-committal way of using this recipe. Um, and it's great when it's combined with the other ingredients, but it's typically a great place to start. So as you're scrolling through social media, liking, and we'll talk a little bit about who you should do this to in a second, but let's focus on the ingredients first. So liking. The second ingredient is commenting. Commenting. And I want you to comment with intention. So unfortunately, there's a lot of like robots and automated programs out there leaving comments because they're trying to use this recipe. They heard that it works and they're trying to cut the line and do things in an automated way. And it just as tacky, it doesn't work. We kind of all know it, that it's happening, right? You got those comments that are like, great job, and it's a little thumbs up emoji, and you're like, this has nothing to do with anything, right? Um, so we're leaving comments with intention and spit, uh, pick something specifically in that um, post to comment on. All right, so be specific. Talk about something actually happening in the post itself and in response to someone. So this is not something that you can do um, too quickly, but I also don't want you to spend too much time on this. Um, okay, so liking, commenting, the third ingredient is a follow. Now, the, I'm not talking about following, unfollowing. So there's a strategy that some people teach where you just follow a bunch of people and then if they don't follow you back, you unfollow them. Okay, I don't like that strategy. It's annoying to me. Um, what I'm talking about is following people who are ideal clients customers, people who would listen to your podcast or watch your YouTube show, and they are interested in what you have to offer, or they could be. And you are interested in potentially seeing their posts. Okay, so this is a mutual agreement or arrangement here. And you want to make sure that this isn't just a random follow, right? These are people that you could like and comment continually on their posts. Okay. So like, comment, follow, and then we have the dessert. 
The direct message. This one's fun, you guys. Okay. Um, So I love direct messaging because you can get more personalized and start conversations. Um, This is not selling. Okay. This is engaging. There's a difference. This is um, communicating and um, being a, a human being and not being a robot. So a good rule of thumb is if you wouldn't say to someone randomly in like a Starbucks, don't say it on social media. So if you wouldn't go up to a stranger and say, hi, my name's Andrea. Listen to my podcast. It's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like listening to Spotify uh, or podcasts. If someone said that to me, I'd be like, you're weird and I don't want to talk to you. And <laughs> I've got to get out of this as soon as I possibly can, right? Nobody likes that. But if I went, oh my gosh, I like your bag. Where did you get it? Or I heard you order a pumpkin spice latte. Do you like how they taste? Conversation starters, just like with dating. Now, this can be a challenge for my introverts out there. So I'll give you a few shortcuts. Um, The first shortcut that I like is a response to a post. So if someone has posted something, instead of leaving a comment, try leaving a direct message or sending them a direct message. This feels personalized. It almost feels like texting someone. And it can be a great way to build a relationship with someone. Um, This works well with Instagram stories as well. If you have someone you've been watching their stories, try responding to their stories and seeing where the conversation goes. In a general rule of thumb is that it takes about 10 to 20 touch points before someone even considers hiring you. So again, this is like working out. You're not going to see weight drop off the first time you run on that treadmill, right? It takes practice. Uh, Same thing with this um, engagement recipe. You're not going to get 10 clients by going out and direct messaging 10 people today. Um, It's going to take time. It takes time, but it works. Now, I want to leave you with some tips for this. Um, Just like working out, you cannot go in on a Saturday and spend five hours doing this because you will exhaust yourself and you will feel like it's not worth it. So it's just like going to the gym for five hours and saying, why haven't I lost 20 pounds yet? Takes a little more than that, right? So set yourself a a timer. Um, I suggest putting this as like a little task in your Google Calendar or your Trello or Asana that is recurring that you can go, okay, every day uh, during my lunch hour, I'm going to do this for 20 minutes. And that's where you see the success. Okay, so that's the grow stage of the strategy. There's a few other things that's included, so definitely check out the free course for more on that. But I want to end our podcast episode today talking about the accelerate stage of the framework. So we've got build, create, grow, and accelerate. And the accelerate portion is where you're going to have fun. Okay, so, you know, this engagement growth recipe in the growth stage is really great for kickstarting your growth, but you make it to the point where you outgrow it. And that's my goal for you. And you may need to add some more fuel to the fire. You kind of have a sense of what works. And so you're ready to kick it off. So one of my favorite ways to do this is through paid advertising. Now, I don't recommend starting with Facebook ads or Instagram ads until you know what works, okay? Um, I know that there are a lot of people who um, suggest testing this out, but oftentimes a lot of us are at this stage if we're implementing these strategies, we're still maybe testing out some of our business or maybe we don't have the cash flow. We just have a lot of time equity and not a lot of monetary equity that we can put into our business. And so Facebook ads sometimes feels daunting. Um, but I think it's a really great next step um, once you get some organic growth. And in fact, in the Savvy Social School, My Facebook ad strategist, Julie O'Hara, is um, now going to do regular coaching sessions. She did our first one last month. She's got two more coming up by the end of the year, all about Facebook ads and how you can start them with smaller budgets and how you can get started because she did such a fantastic job with my ads and with our clients' ads, and I want to bring that to you. So definitely check that out in the school. But Facebook ads are a really great place to accelerate something that's already working. So let's say, for instance, you have a next step that works really well. You've got that lead magnet, you've got a free course, you've got a podcast, you know that if people know about it, they're probably going to eventually want to work with you. 
Okay, so now you can add fuel to the fire. Now you can get that in front of way more people and test out your theories. In this accelerate stage as well, this is where you can ex start exploring some other components of social media. Let's say you wanted to start a Facebook group. I would suggest having a really solid base of social media followers first before starting a group. Uh, I'll link to my um, episode on whether you should start a Facebook group or not. But generally speaking, you should know that when you launch a group, you should feel fairly confident if you have at least 100 people to join your group. If you don't, I would say it's maybe not time to join a group. And also in this accelerate um, phase, now you can start building up collaborations. So one of the best ways to kind of build your social media audience is to leverage other networks. And as a podcaster, I'm going to rec recommend podcasts. So if you go on other podcasts and talk about your work and provide value at the end of the episode that you're on, you could say, come follow me on Instagram or connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, you can also collaborate in other ways, doing giveaways. Um, we have classes in the Savvy Social School about how to do that. Um, and even in this stage, this is when you want to start thinking about outsourcing social media if it's not for you. So finding support with your social media strategy. But in order to do that, you have to have your digital brain and you have to kind of have a sense of what already works for your audience so that when you bring someone into the mix, they can continue that with some um, experience and expertise behind them. All right, so the, that's the framework. Build, create, grow, and accelerate. And if you want to learn more about this framework or if you just are tired of trying to figure it out yourself, join us in the Savvy Social School. It's a coaching and training program for online entrepreneurs and business owners who need that support. We have regular coaching calls, weekly sessions that you can join in. We have multiple times um, so that you can join in whether you live in Australia or whether you live in New York City. Um, and we have a vibrant community of over 150 members who are right there with you learning it. And if we just connect with each other, there's, there's a bunch of members right now. And if you're listening to this live, this is September 15th, 2020, we just started our 100 follower growth challenge. So if you are interested in getting 100 followers in 10 days, there's still time to join us. There's going to be prizes at the end of this challenge, and it's really just a play-by-play -play walkthrough of exactly how to build um, that level of followership over 100 days, and really, it's all about confidence. It's not about the followers. It's showing you that you can do this. You can apply this framework to what you're doing today. If you have a question about the Savvy Social School, reach out to us, hello at SavvySocialSchool.com. Now, up next... Next week, we have special guest Matt Johnson on the show. He's going to be talking about how to be micro famous, which I love because I think sometimes we think this like we should be viral. We should be like mega big, like Oprah or something. And really, we can make a lot of impact by just impacting the right people. So definitely stay tuned for that episode next week, how to be micro famous. And hey, if you love the show, make sure you subscribe rate, review us. We really appreciate it. We want to stay in the top 100 marketing podcasts in the US and Canada. And we only can do that with your support. And the best way to support us is to subscribe, review, and share with a friend if you think they could use it. That's all for this week. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.